Anatomy of the perineal muscles in the lower leg. The perineal muscles are a group of three muscles, the perineus longus, the perineus brevis, and the perineus tertius. Other muscles may exist. The perineus longus and brevis muscles lie within the lateral compartment, and the perineus tertius muscle is located within the anterior compartment of the leg. Origin and insertion. The perineus brevis muscle arises from the lower two-thirds of the lateral surface of the fibula. The perineus longus muscle arises from the upper two-thirds of the lateral surface of the fibula. The perineus tertius muscle arises from the lower one-fourth to one-third of the anterior portion of the medial surface of the fibula. The perineus longus is the longest and the most superficial muscle of the lateral compartment. The tendon of the perineus longus muscle begins at a higher level than the tendon of the perineus brevis and can easily be recognized on ultrasound around the ankle area. The perineus longus is lateral and posterior to the perineus brevis muscle. Near the ankle and on the ultrasound image, the perineus longus appears as a tendon, while the perineus brevis may appear as a muscle. Origin and insertion. The perineus longus muscle is inserted into two bones, the base of the first metatarsal and the adjoining portion of the medial cuneiform bone. Before the perineus longus insertion, the tendon makes three turns. The first turn is at the tip of the lateral malleolus. The second turn occurs below the trochlear process of the calcaneus. And finally, it turns at the groove of the cuboid, crossing the plantar surface of the foot obliquely. The perineus brevis muscle is inserted into the tuberosity of the base of the fifth metatarsal bone. A vulsion fracture of the fifth metatarsal base may occur from the pole of the perineus brevis tendon. The perineus brevis muscle can be used as a flap to reconstruct a small defect of the distal third of the lower leg. The perineus tertius muscle is inserted into the dorsal surface of the base of the fifth metatarsal bone. The location of the anterolateral ankle arthroscopy portal, which is the second portal, the first portal is usually medial, should lie just lateral to the perineus tertius tendon. Staying lateral to the perineus tertius tendon helps to avoid injury to the dorsal lateral branch of the superficial perineal nerve. The perineal muscles are situated on the outer side of the lower leg and the tendons attach to the foot. Near the ankle, the perineus brevis is closer to the fibula. There are two perineal retinacula which holds the two perineal tendons. The superior perineal retinaculum, which is the important one, the inferior perineal retinaculum is not that important in holding the tendons in its position behind the fibula. Rupture of the superior perineal retinaculum may cause perineal tendon subluxation, and subluxation may be acute, chronic, or recurrent. Acute rupture of the superior perineal retinaculum allows for subluxation of the perineal tendons and may cause disability to the ankle and to the patient. Retromalleolar pain on active eversion is a specific and highly suggestive finding for dislocation of the perineal tendons. Injury to the perineal tendons is a frequently overlooked cause of persistent lateral ankle pain after trauma. The most reliable sign is persistent swelling along the posterolateral edge of the fibula. A pathognomonic sign for perineal tendon subluxation is an avulsion of a piece of bone from the fibula. The flex sign is an indication for perineal tendon subluxation. Sometimes you call that avulsion fracture of the fibula, the rim fracture.
The piece of bone from the avulsion fracture is long and thin. Tear of the superior perineal retinaculum may be misdiagnosed because of the associated pain, swelling, and ichymosis that may hinder early diagnosis. Pain associated with perineal tendinitis is located behind the lateral malleolus. Pathophysiology of Charcot Marie Tooth Disease Cave of various foot deformity with weakness of the tibialis anterior, perineus brevis, and intrinsic muscles. A high arch is a sign of the condition. The tibialis anterior function is normal. The perineus longus is not affected, causing plantar flexion of the first tray, resulting in cavus foot deformity. Perineus longus spasm can occur with tarsal coalition in the foot. It may occur with rheumatoid arthritis and other conditions. In polio transfer of the perineus longus muscle in the presence of a strong tibialis anterior muscle will result in a dorsal barium at the forefoot supinates. It must be combined with lateral transfer of the tibialis anterior muscle to the base of the second metatarsal bone. The shaft of the first metatarsal is dorsiflexed and the big toe is plantar flexed as seen when there is imbalance between the tibialis anterior muscle and the perineus longus muscle. Innervation. The perineus longus and perineus brevis muscle receive their innervation from the superficial perineal nerve. The perineus tertius muscle is considered to be the lower lateral part of the extensor digitorum longus muscle, as you can see here. Innervation. The perineus tertius muscle is innervated by the deep perineal nerve. Function. Function of the perineus longus muscle is to avert and plantar flex the foot, as well as maintain the transverse arch of the foot. Aversion means pronation. The medial foot edge is lowered and the lateral foot edge rises. This is an example of foot aversion. The function of the perineus brevis muscle is to avert the foot. This is the sciatic nerve and this is the roots that contribute to the sciatic nerve from L4 to S3. The sciatic nerve splits into two components, common perineal and tibial nerve. The common perineal gives two branches, the superficial perineal and the deep perineal. It is the superficial perineal nerve that gives foot eversion. It supplies the perineus longus and perineus brevis through S1 nerve root. Inversion and the eversion occurs at the talocalcaneal joint, which is the subtalar joint, and at the talonavicular joint. Inversion means supination. This is an example of foot inversion. Muscle involved in foot inversion are the tibialis anterior, the tibialis posterior. The perineal muscles are not involved in foot inversion. They are foot everters. The function of the perineus tertius muscle is to evert the foot and dorsiflex the foot at the ankle joint. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.